Hey guys welcome back to Fan Fiction Wannabe, where imagination knows no bounds. Are you ready to dive headfirst into the captivating world of fan fiction? Well, you're in the right place. Don't forget to give credit to the author. Their info can be found in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join our amazing community. Now for the story. Perfect time, part 2. So, I see you decided to take me up on my offer, Ashpin takes a sip of his coffee. Naruto looked at the substance in his cup, yes, but what is this? Coffee, that is coffee, Naruto. It is made from beans that are grown in Mistral. It's a stimulant, perhaps the most important in the morning, but you're probably used to drinking tea. Ashpin questioned as he looked at the blonde woman next to him, nodding. Naruto watched as she walked toward the elevator, sighing. He then turns back to Ashpin, smells really bitter. Heh, it depends on how you like it. I prefer it straight black. Go on. I have sent my colleague to get tea, but I would like to see if you could get used to coffee. Trust me, Ashpin says as he takes another sip, you're not being offensive. Naruto nodded, slowly bringing the cup to his lips. He took some of the liquid in his mouth, swishing it around to get a taste, frowning a little bit, but then shrugs as he starts to finish it off. Ashpin knew that look, it was the look of a man struggling to down a drink he didn't like because someone gave it to him. Watching the blonde finish the contents, Naruto sighs. It's not half bad, but definitely not what I'm used to, Naruto admits as he sets the cup on a small plate he had gotten. That was almost as bitter as tree bark. You aren't lying. Just be cordial about it. I am. So, Naruto Uzumaki, I do have a few issues with you. Issues that aren't your fault but have to be fixed before I even think about having you on my team. You'll have to attend Beacon for a year. Ashpin blankly stated as Naruto got up from the chair almost instantly. A year, he was taken aback, oh, come on, I hated school even from my time. Well, this is a new age compared to yours, you should learn our culture, Ashpin said as he finished his coffee, plus our laws may be different, so it's best you look them up. So, will I be working with ten-year-old kids or something? Naruto questioned as he crossed his arms, not that I'm complaining, well, sort of. Ten-year-old kids? Yeah, that's how you train huntsmen, right? From the first time they can walk? I don't follow. Naruto took a deep breath, back where, when I'm from, Kanoha and the other villages trained kids as young as five to kill and defend their village. I started training when I was six, I made my first kill when I was eleven, and I've got scars across my body from where I've been beaten, stabbed, burned, etc. That is, Ashpin struggled to find the word before he found it, barbaric. Well, that's how my time was, I assumed the time when fighting didn't change, especially since you got these demonic things running around. Speaking of, being honest, I've never really felt anything like them. They're void of any natural chakra, but I can sense negative chakra within them like they were literally created from an energy that's been muddied. It's a little disturbing, Naruto scratched his chin as he looked at Ashpin, and I don't see how something with no life chakra is walking. Well, the fact you can even sense energy from Grimm is astounding, Ashpin states as he leaned back, as far as we know, they don't produce any aura. Boha. It is life energy we use daily to enhance our abilities, fuel our semblances, it even gives us a protective shield around us. So, this stuff, it's kind of like this? Naruto took a deep breath, then the room started to shake a little as a screech filled the air, red energy bubbled around Naruto, forming a fox-like cloak around him. The blonde's eyes had turned a very dark crimson, his eyes even becoming fox-like with an energy tail swaying behind him. The sudden crashing of ceramic brought Naruto's attention to behind him, he saw the blonde woman from before looking right at him. She seemed, afraid? He then looked back to Ashpin, who even looked a little disturbed by the display, and then Naruto sighed as he deactivated. Looking at them with a frown, it's nothing like that, is it? Quite certainly not. Do not worry about Ms. Glinda there, she was just stunned by the power you have just exerted. I am, frankly, impressed myself. The pressure you filled the room with, Ashpin adjusted his jacket a little, was solid, to say the least. Well, Naruto laughs nervously as he rubbed the back of his head and gave a fox-like toothy smile, sorry. Don't be, tis a learning experience for the both of us, replies Ashpin as he watched Glinda pick up the remnants of the teapot and tea with her semblance. It didn't go unnoticed by Naruto, that's a cool jutsu, Glinda-san. Glinda put the remnants in a trash can, jutsu? Seriously, Naruto pinched his nose, you all don't know what jutsu is. It was the archaic art of manipulating the world with aura, what we call today magic, you call jutsu. Then again, magic is rarely real, and most of it is just, underwhelming. Then again, 
Perhaps it is for the best that some things from a seemingly barbaric age, Ashbin leaned forward, be forgotten. Naruto, do not engage. No, I'm not, just ready to deck him in his smug face. Enough. Karama, you realize that compared to everyone here. Don't you ever start thinking like that, otherwise, you'll fall into the power you've gained. Right, sorry, it's just... Just bite your tongue, be cordial. I can sense he's hiding more than he's letting on. Speaking of that, I can sense a faint life signature below this place. A time and place. Right. Well, sorry if me being a child soldier disturbs you, Naruto took a deep breath to calm down. I don't feel disturbed, I feel sorry for you. You've known war and battle since the age of seven from what you just told me. Honestly, Ashbin leaned back, most children here are playing with dolls or video games at that age. We don't really start teaching anyone to kill until 13, and that's mostly on paperwork, and mostly to kill Grimm. Naruto bit his lip a little bit, I don't want to say it because it may sound offensive to you all. Ashbin shrugs, you're entitled to your own opinion. You're all soft, Naruto told them bluntly as he continued, I fought even before then. People didn't really like Jinchuriki, which is what I am, and they sometimes made their kids beat me. I froze only once, Naruto then showed them his left hand, and I made a blood oath that I'd never ever do that again. Back in my day, freezing up was a death sentence for you and your team. Naruto then took a deep breath, I've seen friends die in front of me before they turned 17. I've seen some of my sensei bite the dust as well, and it's the most sobering thing for someone. You're troubled, Ashbin tells him as he looked right into Naruto, I can tell that much. I'm only troubled because I don't understand, Naruto replied as he rubbed his head a little, I took out Kagaya and somehow the world ended up falling anyway. It makes anything that me, my friends, my family strive to do, invalid. Not everything, Naruto. Humans are still here. Yeah, well, perhaps they didn't have wars due to Grimm. Not invalid, at least in that time, but the world is like the wind. It's ever-changing, ever-flowing, and not always blowing in the same direction. The age of peace you probably created in your time was long-lasting, but humans, and faunus, are creatures of habit. So, you didn't make anything at your age invalid, time moved on, Ashbin gives him a little pep talk as well as a lecture. Naruto sighs, if you say so because frankly I kind of just want to go back home. Well, let's make a deal then, Ashbin leaned on his desk. Naruto looked at him, what's the deal? You help me find the source of the Grimm, you help translate a few archaic artifacts and tomes I've gathered, perhaps even search ruins that only you can manage due to your, he bit his lip a little, unique skill set. If you do this, I promise on my life that I'll do everything I can to get back to the past, freeing the future from this scourge, and in turn, going home. Naruto took a deep breath, what's the possibility you can even find a way? The same possibility as you will truly ever understand that we've entered an age of both peace and war. We're too busy fighting the Grimm to fight amongst each other, mostly. Our ways may seem, in all honesty, subpar to you. But, I assure you, our technology in this age is second to none. Ashbin said as he extended his arm out, deal? Closing his eyes, Naruto took a moment and then opened them. He then extended his own hand and gripped Ashbin's. They both shook hands, looking at one another, and Ashbin happily chuckled as he pulled his hand away. Splendid, Ashbin says as he watches Glinda returning with more tea, and the tea has arrived. Naruto took a small cup, looking at it, he then took a fair amount into his mouth and swished it about. Swallowing it, he then quickly finished the cup, taking the hot contents down his throat like regular water, giving a sigh of contentment soon afterward. So, he placed the glass on the plate he just got it from, what happens now? Naruto was escorted by Glinda, showing him around the city. A few times he almost stepped out into oncoming traffic without looking at the walk signs. He was surprised to find that he would be affected by Glinda's semblance as to stop his movement. Then again, he didn't really struggle, so it was debatable how much effect she could truly hold over him. The blonde looked around, noting the tall skyscrapers, so this is, a city. Yes, Glinda says, why? No wonder the Grimm know where you're at, you practically broadcast it with these structures of light. Sorry, Naruto apologized, his shinobi training getting the better of his tongue a fair amount of times this week so far. Glinda sighed, do not be, you've got a lot to learn. I only wanted to show you the city since I have to go to my apartment. Ah, well, besides the really weird boxes of death driving on the roads, I'm kind of shocked. Especially since a lot of people use these boxes, cars, as a sort of transportation, Naruto admitted as he was looking at the varying metal boxes drive by them. And then there are these super large airships used to transport people. 
That's about the most advanced my people got, and then there are smaller ones. Glinda couldn't help it, it was like watching a child look out a car window for the first time. Our age is full of other wonders. Well, what are these wires coming out of that person's ear? Are they like secret police or something? Naruto questioned as he pointed toward a person walking by them, not noticing the glare the man gave him in return. Glinda looked behind them and saw what he was talking about. Those are called headphones, and they can be used to help with communication from your scroll. Scroll, but I didn't see a big wad of paper near him. Oh, yes, not the archaic term, but these. Glinda got her scroll out and showed Naruto the electronic device. These are electronic communication devices and media players. They're a tool, entertainment, and a way of communication. Wow, Naruto took it out of her hand. Wait, what are these things on the screen? Applications, Glinda tapped on the one that looked like a phone, that's a phone application. Phone, oh you mean comlink? Sort of, but it's for both casual use and emergency use. Oh, okay, that's cool. Naruto then saw an arrow button at the bottom and clicked it, which brought him back to the main screen. Looking at all the applications on the phone, he noticed one and clicked it. It displayed something called Veil Tube, obviously, he was in a place called Veil, so it had something to do with it. Ah, Veil Tube, it's a media website. It's meant to upload videos, random challenges, music, and such. Think of something, do you like heavy metal, rap, hip-hop? Glinda questioned as he looked at her, turning his head as if he were a dog. Glinda took the scroll, getting a headphone set out. Here, stick these in your human ears. If you stick them in your faunus ears, you'll probably burst the drums. He did so, watching her click a button on them as they made a beeping noise. Waiting to connect. What, so the lady just said that she was waiting to connect. That's just the computer voice, here. You are connected, the device said in Naruto's ear. Okay, let's try something energetic. Glinda took the scroll out of Naruto's hand. Naruto then suddenly heard his ear flood with something loud, but he recognized the clam clapping in his ears. They were archaic instruments, as the people in this age would say. He found that his fox cat-like ears could still hear the world around him. Glinda noticed that Naruto heard someone start singing when his eyes widened a little bit. Taking a moment to turn around the corner with Glinda, he bopped his head a little bit. Watching the younger blonde, Glinda couldn't help but laugh a little bit. Wow, Naruto says as he listened to the song, this is, strange. The song is called Saturday Night, it's by a band called Azamatli. Glad you like it. It's a personal favorite of mine, Glinda said as she walked with him. The blonde then heard the chorus part of it, hearing all the instruments. What's this horn I keep hearing? Saxophone. What's a saxophone? You'll learn as you spend time here, Vale City is a melting pot of culture. Okay, now that I can understand. Oh, really, so your village was a place of melting cultures together? Naruto stared blankly, uh, no, I mean, it's a pot you use to melt cheese and stuff. Glinda smacked her face, not too far different than what Tsunade did back in her day, and it made Naruto stop for a moment. It made Naruto stop for a moment, turning around Glinda saw him just standing there, taking the headphones out. He gave a deep sigh, sadness filled him, Bachan. Naruto was sitting on top of the Hokage mansion, wearing his orange jumpsuit, looking at the rising sun. It had been the week after the third Hokage's replacement came, Tsunade, but Naruto still stood atop the building every other morning. Hiruzen Sarutobi was like the grandfather he never had, and he'd talk to the boy like he was his own, which was why Naruto shared a close relationship with the man's actual grandson Kanoamaru. But, now he was just staring into the rising sun. Gigi, Naruto murmured, I wish I was stronger. Naruto, a woman spoke as she walked behind him, what are you doing here? Oh, Bachan, what's up? For once, I really wish you'd stop calling me that. Well, you're almost as old as Erosinen, so no. Damn Gaki. She saw him though, despite the playful little jabs, he was sad, what are you doing here? I'm just watching the sunrise over Kanoha. I used to watch it with Gigi sometimes. Gigi? The third Hokage. He took me under his wing a little bit when I was younger. He was like the grandfather I never got to know. Tsunade then watched him bite his lips, now he's gone. Sitting by him, she just placed a hand on his back, I know. Naruto looked at her, stunned by the care she was showing, watching her chuckle. The sun started to rise even higher, their shadows elongating as it did. Naruto just stared over the village. A village that one day he may rule over, care for, and protect with his life truly on the line every day. I miss him too. I wish we'd made amends, but perhaps we are in a strange way. 
He always had high hopes for me, being the granddaughter to the first and all. He loved this village, and I turned my back to him. I guess, Tsunade took a deep breath, sometimes we live our life with regrets. Wish I had told him outright, Naruto says as he hugged his knees, watching the sun rising up more and more, that I loved him like family. All I ever did was pester him. You weren't a pest. Not to him, but the villagers that didn't like me because of the fox just pestered him, and I've always felt responsible for that, a regret. Gaki, you're too young to have regrets. Tsunade got a bottle of sake out, holding it toward Naruto, here. Naruto took it, looking at it, you sure? Yeah, she watched as Naruto took a small drink, good? Not really. Then keep it that way because my biggest regret was becoming an alcoholic. Sometimes it's hard to function. Why don't you get help? I'm too far old to even change the habit. It is my vice, just like Jiraiya's is lust and money. What would be Orochimaru's? Tsunade took a deep breath, the fourth overlooked vice, power. Alcohol, lust, greed, and power. Those are the four vices, because all of them corrupt you over time, make you a shell of who you once were. Give me that. Tsunade took the bottle out of Naruto's hand, finishing it off, gotta drink it fresh. How are you just gonna give me a speech, then turn around and do that crap? Naruto suddenly got up as he had flames in his eyes. Tsunade did the same thing, because I'm older and wiser, Gaki. Bachan. Gaki. Bachan. Gaki. Both growled at one another, with both crossing their arms and looking away from each other. Shizun had been standing on the mansion as well, rubbing her head, and sighing. Like it or not, Tsunade-sama acts just like Naruto-san. Perhaps it's the genes of an Uzumaki to be wild, eccentric, Shizun murmured before noticing both taking a sigh and turning back to the sun, or perhaps deep down they know their family. It wasn't lost on Naruto, his normal human ears twitched, as if he was listening, and he smiled for the first time that week as he stared at the village with Tsunade. He felt at peace. Naruto pressed his hand on his head, slowly he began to return to the normal world. Glinda looked right at him. He was sitting on the ground, breathing hard. She sat with him, noticing the red face as he looked at the ground. What happened? You had a panic attack, you started hyperventilating and then fell to the ground. Oh, wow, sorry about that. Naruto shook his head, getting up, looking at the street as it was clearer. He could see water, meaning they were nearer to the docks. Naruto. Kurama? I felt your mental state deteriorate, something triggered the panic attack. I just thought of Bachan, and just fell into a memory. I see. What? You've got PTSD, your mind is trying to hold on to the memories of the good times, but in doing so, it's forcing the reality of never returning to them upon you. What do you suggest? therapy, adaptation, and just calming down. Will we ever find a way home? I don't know. Naruto then heard a loud crash of glass breaking, looking over as someone got thrashed and tossed across the street. A girl in a red hooded cape, along with a black corset and combat boots, used a large scythe to hit another man away. However, unseen by Glinda, was the sniper that was aiming at the girl. Naruto suddenly flashed away in gold, she turned to where he appeared and saw him smash the sniper into the building. Hearing multiple bulwarks, she saw one divert away and heading toward a rooftop. Running quickly, she found that the girl was in pursuit of someone climbing a ladder. Using her training as a huntress, she quickly made her way toward the stairs and began to parkour her way up the stairs. Naruto saw them coming in, finding a very strong power source in one, along with them being littered with evil intent. He leaped over to where the girl was standing as he saw a man dressed in a white coat taunting the girl as he jumped into it. Appearing in a golden flash just in time, Naruto looked down to see red crystals glowing on the ground, the girl was screaming something about an explosion about to happen, so he turned around and covered her in the same golden flames as it happened. He heard the whistling of the jets as the explosion died down, looking up he saw that they were about to fly away, and then he reached out as a golden claw hand appeared and gripped the bulwark. The blonde breathed hard as he struggled to hold it, it dragged him slightly. We've not fully recovered still. Just help me hold them, Karama. Whatever is propelling that contraption, it's powerful. We've got a huntsman. He heard the man call out, then seeing a pair of golden eyes from the shadows of the inside. The ground around them started to glow in sigils, chakra? Naruto then used himself as a barrier more but found that Glinda was barely able to take the explosions as she put a barrier around them. However, doing so forced Naruto's energy arm to let go of the aircraft. He watched as they started speeding away, he then turned to Glinda. Hey, Naruto says as he looked at the girl in red, I'll go after them. Glinda looked at him, 
Go ahead, get after them. Naruto nodded quickly, running across the rooftops as he pursued the aircraft. He flashed golden as he leaped over various roofs, and then ended up running on a larger building as they tried to escape by going up. Taking a deep breath as he extended out his arm, he then watched as two mini arms offered their assistance as he began to form a jutsu. Slowly the ball formed, becoming bladed as the wind was added to it. He ends up leaping off the building as he reached the end, ending up airborne as he saw the aircraft below him, then he realized he couldn't launch his attack since he ran the risk of missing and hitting people below. Flipping forward, using the burst of wind to end up below the bulwark, Naruto spun around one time before launching it. He saw the aircraft maneuver just in time to avoid the main part, but Naruto's eyes shined with power as the sphere of influence formed as the ball exploded. Clapping his hands together, the sphere expanded rapidly, barely missing them as he flipped backward and landed hard on a rooftop. Growling he began to dash across Vale's roofs again, following the aircraft as he saw it go out to open ocean. No, they're gonna get away. Naruto, stop, I sent something large. What? To our left. Naruto turned too late as a green sphere hit him, impacting him hard as he was sent to the ground as he tried leaping over a building. He crashed into the roof, falling through several floors of a luckily abandoned building. His arm was broken, that much he could tell, but he was already getting healed by Kurama. Leaping out of the hole he had made on impact, flipping forward as he landed on the roof, Naruto saw someone in a black cloak and wearing a white mask floating just up on a skyscraper. Growling he watched as the cloaked figure flashed away in green, his eyes opened as he felt chakra coming from the person. He stood there, breathing hard as blood slowly came from his mouth, he gripped his good fist over his shoulder. Kurama, did you feel that that was? Yes, that was Komiai's chakra, but that's impossible. Why? I found Chomei inside of us, his chakra is almost completely gone through, and he's unconscious along with the other tailed beasts. Naruto took a deep breath as he deactivated Ninetales chakra mode, taking a seat on the seat on the broken roof, shaking his head, that sphere felt like a wind version of a truth-seeking sphere. There is more to this world, to what Ashbin probably knows, but it was weird. There was no way they've kept hidden unless they knew we'd be pursuing unless they knew about us. I don't like that notion because it means that Kagaya has a hand in this, but that can't be possible. That's not likely, but we'll have to be careful, I sent someone coming. Get on your knees. Naruto heard someone scream, seeing a man dressed in a uniform holding a gun up to him. Naruto sighed, rolling his eyes, and here I thought my luck couldn't get worse. Sitting in a jail cell, the blonde was leaning against the wall, sighing as he muttered aloud, well, this isn't the first time. A few times as a child when they caught you stealing apples, one time falsely as a child in the academy, and then a couple over the course of your entire shinobi career, one huge conspiracy. You know all you need to do is break the bars open, walk out, and then just fight your way. Bad move, Kurama, but aren't we going to discuss how the others are in me? Better yet, how they're inside of me but their chakra is currently residing in another person. The same person who just broke my arm, helped criminals escape, and to top it off, slightly pissed us off? Naruto mused to Kurama, giving him a very long line of questioning. The eight trigram seal in you evolved, what once was a person is now like a literal temple, there are different spots in the seal for each of us. I am at the very center of it, the swirl. The others are around me, the writing on your stomach before forming the barrier in the center, each line is a separate area of your evolved seal due to the six path senjutsu chakra. I, Kurama growled slightly as he dragged Naruto into his subconscious. Opening his eyes, finding himself in a forest area, Naruto looked around. He then saw Kurama sitting on the ground in a very large clearing, surrounded by giant trees. The blonde blinked for a minute, he wondered where the sewer had gone, then he saw the Tori gates leading in eight different pathways. Each gate was marked with a symbol, a kanji. Tanuki. Cat. Turtle. Monkey. Horse dolphin. Slug beetle. Ox octopus. Wow, Naruto rubbed his head and found that he had no fox ears now, what the? In your subconscious, you display yourself as you were prior to the venture we took through time it seems, perhaps my earlier theory is both correct and incorrect. We may have traveled through time, but, as for you taking upon these animalistic features is still baffling. Naruto, Kurama spoke as he raised his head up, your seal has evolved to allow us to create pocket worlds inside to fit us. In case you were wondering where the sewer went, that no longer exists, that was just your overall outlook on life. Blinking once, Naruto then chuckled, so what does my own look like then? Given that you have yet to turn around, 
Naruto turns around as Kurama speaks and sees a black hole just sitting there, due to your confusion, your mind doesn't know how it feels about the situation. I have seen it change into a forest that never stops raining, to the city we were just in, but back to confusion. Naruto takes a deep breath, but that still doesn't explain a lot, why are all the tailed beasts here but not their chakra? You died, Naruto's eyes widened at Kurama's words, when your heart stops beating, we will start fading from you. Our chakra will disperse before our bodies dissolve, and when you were going toward the black hole inside of the, what we will call a time rip, I could feel their chakra being pulled away. Naruto growled as he realized something, that bitch, Kagaya. I had feared, but if it's true she stole some of your chakra in the clash and then got kicked away into her own rip. What we thought was outside of the sphere was just the rip itself, we collapsed that sphere into a black hole. Whatever dimension we were in was likely obliterated when we did. In turn, however, we saved all others. A sacrifice, Kurama lowered his head, for the greater good. But, whoever attacked us couldn't have been Kagaya, she's way too powerful to just break my arm. Plus, I felt the object that hit me, it was nothing but Komiai's chakra, it was like a truth-seeking sphere made purely of wind nature chakra. If they had shaped it, Naruto grimaced, could have done more than broke my arm. Indeed, Kurama agrees and then takes a deep breath, we should investigate on our own. Ashpin is not seeking to harm us, but, I do not fully trust him. He's much more powerful than he lets on, I can sense the usage of nature chakra inside of him, he's lying about a couple of things as well. Not to mention the energy we felt under Beacon, which we will explore later when they think we're ignorant of the fact. Fine by me, Naruto sat down and crossed his legs, leave one world with problems and come to another. Our luck sucks buddy, telling you that now, I thought foxes were supposed to be lucky. He he he, Kurama lightly growls with a large smile on her face, if that were the case we would have never met. Well, screw you too, Naruto stuck his tongue out at Kurama, really felt the love with that one. We could, you know, I am a female. Kurama stated, watching as Naruto looked at her. Then his eyes went wide and white, and then he screamed, eh? Kurama howled in laughter as he threw his head back, roaring out as he fell backward and clutched his stomach, you fell for it. You are such a dolt, if I were a female fox, I'd most certainly choose a better mate than some snout-nosed upstart of a brat. Naruto's eyes twitched a little bit, oh wow, thank you for that constructive criticism, bastard fox. Little brat. Overgrown furball. Short stuff. They stopped, with Kurama sinking his head, and I lost. Wouldn't be the first time, Naruto shrugged as he smirked, that was a bad insult, Kurama. Unless I was talking about? Oh no, no you're not, because we both know better. We found out the reason you created that sexy jutsu. I plead on that one, never have I ever used it for that. Naruto laughed as he called back to a memory, remember just right after I got back from my training trip in the hot springs, I caught a few girls spying on me. That was the day I realized that there are indeed female Jiraiya, Naruto blushed brightly as he rubbed the back of his head, I felt really proud and really creeped out at the same time. Women are complicated. How would you know? I am a tailed beast, a being made of chakra, have you stopped to consider that I could use jutsu as well? Holy crap. Kurama chuckled, I wasn't always such an ass back in the day, in fact, I was known as a suave man by the name Hiroko Taka in the ages before shinobi really got their foothold. After each conquest, be it a simple farm girl or even a princess, I would always etch their name into my heart. Oh god, Naruto pinched his nose, can I get asshole Kurama back now, please? No, Kurama bluntly stated as he laughed, besides this was thousands of years ago before I met you. So, technically my years of exploration were done before you tailless monkeys started building industry and using chakra commonly. Well, Naruto blushed, what were the best girls like? You'd be surprised, Kurama took a deep breath, priestesses. Naruto then realized something, more like someone, Cheyenne, oh, oh that sucks. It was one of the few times I was going to be cordial to you, given that emotions during such actions run high, and back then, it made it easy for me to come out. Wait, so I could have been, and, you, that's actually scary, Kurama. Kurama laughed a little bit, all is fair in love and war, Naruto. Well, put a sock in it, because we're not doing anything like that here. If we have a slim chance of going home I don't want to grow too attached to a girl here, Naruto sighed as he looked up into the fall sky, strange this almost feels like Konoha. I modeled this pocket dimension on Konoha's forest of death, just a much more pleasant version. That's cool, but back to Kagaya, if she escaped the sphere, where is she now, 
and, why didn't she come and kill me? That is the million Rio question, where would she be, perhaps she was beaten? A goddess is beaten by someone else, now that's a scary thought. Then again she exited much earlier than us, perhaps she got flung much earlier in time. I doubt she's still alive now, right, she must be dust. Karama sighed, we can only hope. An LEO walked toward the cell holding the teen with the broken arm, rise and shine animal. Naruto's eyes snapped open, the officer backed up as he saw the red glow emanating from them and glared right at him before they turned blue. He took a deep breath. You've got your bail paid, plus we're getting confirmation you're a huntsman in training, so you had a legal duty to pursue the bulwark. Just, the officer gritted his teeth, don't go lunging at people now. Naruto sighed, I'm not even going to ask if that was racism or not because trust me your threats are very hollow there, sir. Watch your mouth, the man stepped back from the cell, right here, sir. Ashbin came walking toward the cell, sighing, welcome to Vale. Heh, Naruto chuckled as he watched the officer leave, kind of miss home even more now. Nothing like that would have ever happened where I am from, too many eyes and ears. Indeed, Menagerie has a lot of eyes and ears. Yeah, it does. Naruto noticed that Ashbin subtly pointed toward a camera on the wall with his eye, he caught on to it as he got up, so when can I leave? A couple of hours. I just got out of a meeting with a very interesting girl. She'll be a younger student at my school, very skilled, and holds a unique spark, a spark I sense within you as well. Tell me something, Naruto Uzumaki, how did you break your arm? Ashbin questioned as he crossed his arms with his cane still in hand. Huffing slightly, Naruto smirked things got a little bit more interesting. Indeed, Ashbin said as he eyed Naruto, it has. Your semblance is very strong, I reviewed the footage over and over. You could have easily taken them out. I don't aim to kill, Naruto told him while occasionally looking at the camera by moving his eyes and not his head, I aim to get answers. The most crucial thing we aim for, we aim for answers to why, and indeed why did they rob a dust shop and take only high-grade dust. Hmm, perhaps we could use a huntsman to investigate, Ashbin walked toward the cell door. Ashbin then smirked, you've done well. Naruto watched as he exited the cell, observing a girl wearing the same clothing he had seen in the small fight walk toward the cell. She was placed inside of it. She looked nervous as she sat down on a bed, and then noticed the blonde in front of her. Holy crap, they locked you up? I thought you were a hunter. Wow, you've gotta be kidding me. See, I thought I was just crazy, but you're actually in the cell with me. She nearly screamed several times, just wow, you kind of saved me a little back there. She then rubbed the back of her head, extending her hand out, Ruby Rose. Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto shook her hand, I'm not staying here much longer. Yeah, me neither, they've got to wait for my dad to sign me out since I'm a minor. Oh, well, I know that feeling. Yeah, but I'm not scared, I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't, you were doing what you were obviously trained to do. Exactly. Ruby huffed like a child, took my baby from me. Naruto's eyes widened, you're a mother, but you're, so, young. Ruby blushed as she looked at him, not exactly, my baby is my weapon. They took my baby from me. Gah, come on dad, get here already. The blonde rubbed the back of his head, um, okay then. His ears flickered as his frown came back, I'm going to have to change how I look in my subconscious, I can't keep switching between human, and this faunus thingy every time I go in the rabbit hole. He chuckled, rabbit hole. Hormones took over as he suddenly imagined a sort of naked kagaya covered by the clouds like his sexy jutsu would be, he blushed madly before going green in the face, oh god why? You know, frankly, she is the literal definition of a goddess. Still, she's ancient. Still a goddess. You all right there, Foxy, you kind of look like you're about to puke, Ruby called out to him. Foxy, Naruto then frowned as his ears flickered, I really wish they'd quit doing that. Ah, but they're adorable, Ruby said as she leaned back on the wall. Naruto shrugged, if you say so, this kind of sucks. Not the first time I've been in a cell, but, I'm not in Komenagiri. Oh, so you are a criminal. Not really, I was messed up a little as a kid, kind of had rotten food delivered to my home. Plus, the social workers from where I'm from hated me, Naruto grimaced at the memories, and it took forever to get stuff straightened up. Is it because you're a faunus? People are such butts when it comes to you guys, you're actually pretty cool, you know. I mean, I have a dog, I kind of wish I had cute dog ears. Then again, Ruby rubbed the back of her head, I probably wouldn't be able to eat cookies. Naruto blinked once, twice, cookies? Yes, I'm quite curious, what are cookies? I don't know, this is the first I'm hearing of this food. 
Damn it all, now I'm hungry. Have they fed you yet by chance? Ruby heard his stomach growl, I got an entire plate of cookies earlier he he he. Naruto growled as he realized that he has been here about five hours without any sort of food, even water, and got up. Slowly walking toward the bars, kind of pissed Oshpin even forgot about him and then tapped on the bars themselves. What is it? The guard said, you'll be going free in a couple of hours. Yeah, about that, can I please get something to eat? You just had food. No, I didn't, I've been here nearly five hours and I've not had anything. It says on the schedule you did. Well, the schedule is bullshiao. Naruto turned to Ruby who had thrown her scroll at him with a childish face, foul language. Well, warn me next time, Naruto slightly barked at her as he rubbed his head, anyway, please, can I get something to eat? Dude, look, it said on your schedule you had food. I'm not about to go through a hassle for your kind when you have just a couple of hours before release, the guard stated as he crossed his arms, deal with it. Naruto growled, clenching his fists as his eyes turned red, calm down, Kurama. This is what Faunus deal with, what that man talked about in the hospital. I see humanity acts like Faunus are the new Jinchuriki in a way. Fools, the lot of them, it seems that some things did not change. He sat back down on the bed, crossing his legs as he glared at the guard, tapping his shoulder. Ruby kept quiet as she looked at his expression, his eyes changing from blue to red as she noticed him shaking his leg. Hey, Ruby reached into her hood, it may seem weird, but I took a cookie with me. She tossed the piece of food over toward Naruto, he caught it, noting the little black dots in the breading. It was hard, but he could feel it was sort of soft on the inside, taking a deep breath as he sniffed it and found a sweet aroma. So, Naruto took a whiff of the black bits, is this the cookie you were talking about? What? You don't know what a cookie is? It's like the best food there is, just surpassed by strawberries. Ruby exclaims, you must taste it, you must relish it, all praise be the mighty chocolate chip cookie. Naruto chuckled, fine, he took a bite out of it. His eyes dilated, and Ruby watched as he quickly bit into the other portions, wow, mama. See, ain't it the best darn thing? Yeah, it is, wow. They're really sugary. I know, right? I mean, holy crap, I can see lights wait what's happening to me I am talking so fast. Ruby laughs, sugar rush. He he he, and so the existential crisis begins. The hell it does, I would kill for a bowl of ramen right now, literally kill. But, is it truly as good as you're making it out to be? Yes. Naruto shakes as he waves his hands in front of him, he laughs as he raised his arms up, that hit the energy spot. Will you two just shut up in there, the guard stated, besides, you're not supposed to share food. Oi, what's your problem? Naruto yelled as he got up from the bed. My problem is you, fox boy, the guard insulted. However, Naruto just took a step back away from the cell, taking a deep breath. Hey look, it's the fox boy. Yeah, look at him, with those ugly whiskers. Fox boy. Foxy. Fox boy. Oh, he wants his mommy. Ha ha ha. Naruto, can we? No, because then that'll just reveal us for what we are. I hate this human, he has a stench. I can sense evil from him, some of the other faunus in these cells are innocent, and I can sense it. We will help them, later, but we'll do what we can here first to get used to the future. Naruto sighed as he backed away from the cell door, whatever, don't yell at her, though. The guard scoffed as he watched Naruto take a seat back on the bed, shaking harder than last time, the blonde realized that the guard was trying to bait him. Taking a deep breath, making sure to keep his nerves calm, he smirked as he came up with a plan. It wouldn't be today, probably not tomorrow, but this guard was getting some good old-fashioned revenge pranking. May whatever god help his soul, Naruto Uzumaki didn't play when it came to revenge pranking, perhaps it was something that could have been used against Madara? Then again, he wouldn't think to dye the Uchiha's ghost's hair pink would be very bright in the middle of a war, but he knew the first Hokage would lose his shit over it, and maybe even Madara himself would just be too embarrassed to continue. As childish as the thought was, it'd been legendary if it happened, even more, if he survived Madara bringing down the moon in anger. Naruto just sat there, sighing as he leaned back. Can't believe we had someone that powerful following us, an orange-haired man in a bowler hat stated, thought you had it covered, Cinder. The woman named Cinder turned to him, well, excuse me if my fall maiden powers couldn't stop an expert hunter. That hunter was no expert, not even a huntsman, a figure in a mask suddenly emerged from the shadows. The figure was feminine, removing her mask to reveal dark red eyes and green hair, Lady Cinder. M, are you alright? You don't look so good. 
I used a lot of power to get to you and blast him back, but there is no doubt, he was using the same power to hunt you. You killed him? Emerald sighs, no, unfortunately, since Salem is going to be angry that I openly used the power she lent me. Indeed, they all turn to a man wearing a red mask, she will be. What do you want, Sangre? Emerald questioned as she saw the man hold up his clawed hand. Just to let you know my assassination of a little spy went as planned. She didn't put up a fight, I merely broke her neck. The poor little bird stood no chance against me, Sangre says as he looked at his claws through the mask, my family has served the All-Mother for generations. The White Fang is powerful, Cinder says as she takes a seat, it'd be better to bring them into the fold rather than fight. Yes, Sangre agrees and then looks toward Emerald, this being you fought. What did he look like? Blonde hair, blue eyes, fox ears. He had this weird golden energy around him, despite me sensing that it was a separate power within him, kind of like us, just more, complete. Emerald explained as best she could, crossing her arms, I need some of that chakra before I run out, and my seal deteriorates. The gateway seal is placed, Sangre points toward a back room, go and recharge yourself. Yes, Cinder? I'm coming as well, I need to report these findings directly. Sangre watched as both walked toward the back room, a bright light emanated from it before they disappeared from his view, he then turned to Roman. His claws tapping on his shoulder, the hood of his cloak coming down to reveal spiky black hair. Roman, Sangre calls as he takes a seat, tell me more about this huntsman. Naruto walked out of the jail, stretching as he looked toward Taeyang, hey. Oi, Naruto, you certainly work fast. Taeyang said as he extended his hand, haven't seen you since lying in a hospital bed nearly a week ago. The younger blonde rubbed the back of his head, yeah, why are you up here? My daughter, Ruby waved her hands at Naruto, Ruby. Oh, that's your daughter. Yeah. Um, I don't see it. Well, she doesn't take after me much, save the attitude. Can't wait to meet the mom, if I ever swing by wherever you are, in, patch? Yeah, and, well. Taeyang sighed, her mother is not among us anymore. Naruto put a hand to his mouth, feeling like an ass, I'm so sorry. You're fine, a detail I left out, Taeyang rubbed the back of his head. He then heard Naruto's stomach grumble, you hungry there, kid? Don't get me started, the guards there are racists, I can smell it on them. I swear some of those people in there are innocent of the crimes they're being locked up for, Naruto then sighed, gut feeling. Aye, but you're out, you should go back to Beacon. Ashbin is probably waiting for you, plus school starts in a day. Taeyang pointed out. Yay, Naruto rolled his eyes, school. Ruby's voice was heard as she stared at him, we're gonna be going to school together. New friend? Taeyang questioned as he looked at his daughter. Ruby nodded, hey, Naruto, where's your weapon at? I don't have a weapon, I am the weapon, Naruto states with gusto. Taeyang laughed, hey now, don't be worming yourself into my daughter's heart there. That laugh wasn't meant to express humor, it was the type of laugh someone gave when they were tired, and they were trying to warn you. Naruto then blushed a little, turning back to him as he bowed a little bit. Didn't mean it like that, Naruto says in apology, but I can't wait to see what Beacon has to offer. Sighing as he walked toward a dorm room, he went to reach for the handle and walk through the door. Instead, he slammed into it, nose first, he growled as he felt his was slightly broken. He fumbled as he began to turn the knob. Okay, Naruto knocked on it and received no answer, what the hell? He didn't get a key, he got one of those scrolls, but he didn't get a key. Is Ash been trying to piss me off, because I smell food in there, and I'm hungry? Break it. Finally. Naruto reached back, his fist being caught, god damn it. He turned to see a pudgy man holding his fist, why hello there, new blood, what seems to be your boggle? I can't get my dorm room open, Oz didn't hand me a key, it is locked. Oh, you foolish lad, we don't use keys here. Boha. Not exactly, here. The pudgy man grabbed the scroll, looking at it as he found the application of Naruto's dorm room, click this here. Naruto clicked and heard the door click open, he then sighed, is everything here like this? Not the bathrooms, but the showers in the dorm rooms are activated by your scroll. It can be set to a specific heat, desired flow, and music if you wish. I am Professor Peterport, he holds his hand out as Naruto went to the door and watched him open, I am the resident hero and grim slayer. The young boy in front of him rubbed the back of his head, well nice to meet you, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Interesting name, Port said as he rubbed his chin, well congratulations on making it to Beacon, Sunny. Hopefully, you'll be an attentive student, a great warrior, and able-bodied. 
Naruto laughed nervously as he shook the man's hand, you've got no idea, he then broke contact with a respectful bow. Closing the door, turning around he nearly wanted to screech as he saw ramen laying on a dinner cart. He swore he heard a choir in his head, and fell to his knees, you are listening. He got up as he ran toward it, quickly grabbing the chopsticks on the cart and hopped on the lone bed as he began to dig into the bowl rapidly. He took notes of the clothing at the end of the room, reading a note on them. In exchange for this kindness, I only ask you to help, welcome to Beacon, Uzumaki Naruto. Ashbin P. Snowberry. Naruto walked inside of the bathroom after taking a nap on the bed, it was springy, a little uncomfortable compared to the mats he was used to sleeping on back home. Taking a deep breath, he noted that few things in the modern era, as Naruto wanted to call it, looked similar even in the bathroom. Electrical work ran through the walls, powered by power relays from power stations across Vale herself. The shower and bath he had in his room looked extremely different. The tub itself was raised from the ground instead of lowered, made of porcelain instead of stone or hardwood. He noted these mats in the tub, obviously like the ones he was standing on, they were surprisingly warm to his feet. His hands gripped a toothbrush, and he looked in the mirror as he opened his mouth, his teeth were yellow from where he hadn't brushed them in almost a week. Hadn't had the chance. Scrubbing his teeth with the minty fresh paste, it slightly burned his tongue, he was used to using the charcoal paste that was easily available in the stores. Spitting into the sink, bending down into it, he never noticed a sensor turn as cold water poured onto his head. The sudden distraction made him raise his head up too fast to avoid the faucet, smacking himself in the back of the head as he fell forward into the sink and slipped out before hitting his head on the door. He had swirls in his eyes as he had a lump rise on the back of his head. Ow, Naruto moaned in pain, the hell was that? I don't know, investigate it. Oi, I'm not exactly in a good mood, shitty bed. Ironically, can never complain about that here, because I can make anything I wish. Of course you can, furball. Naruto looked at the sink, he didn't see any handles. Sighing, he then reached into it. His eyes widened when the faucet turned on, water pouring onto his hand before quickly cutting off. He eyed it as he moved his hands under it, nothing. He then rubbed them under the sensor, that's when the water finally came back on, huh? He saw a red blinking light as the water ran, becoming solid as the water stopped. Taking a deep breath, he watched as the water came back, and it began blinking, he experimented with it for a few minutes. Shrugging as he bent his head under it and took a few gulps of the water as it poured down. Sighing in contentment, he stretched, his lean body flexing in the mirror. He had two large scars on his chest courtesy of Sasuke and Kagaya. The one near his lung was when he was a kid, Sasuke's chidori ramming through him, while Kagaya's had just been in the center mass. Luckily, Kurama was there for both, otherwise, he'd never have made it this far. He had a smaller scar on his right hand from when he stabbed it back in the wave mission to seal his blood oath to never run away when his friends were in danger or freeze. Taking a deep breath, he traced the scar, he had sought to repay Sasuke for it one day. Taking a deep breath as he walked back and leaned against the door, staring into the mirror, he just looked at himself. It felt weird, these new ears, and this world. In this world, from what he observed so far, people had a reliance on tech over themselves. It conflicted with him, for once he felt some sort of hatred for it all, despite how the world seemed plagued with grim, he viewed a lot of the people as soft. Ruby, for how sweet she was, was romanticizing being a huntsman. It was no different when he was seven until he saw someone killed in front of him, by his father figure, Iruka. To live and serve. To bleed one's blood and protect. To take life, to save one's friend. He'd done all those things, he did what he was supposed to do, he made an even greater sacrifice to save the world, his world anyway. Throwing away all his burdens, intent to die with an enemy hellbent on destroying all that he loved, but like a phoenix, he came back from the ashes, it seemed. Not worse for were either, heavy two ears. He scratched his hair, watching Dandra fall out of it, he hadn't showered since training with B. That was a good week and a half ago, and he fought a war for almost four days straight before taking on a goddess. Walking toward a small closet in the bathroom, he opened it to see pure white towels, sighing, he grabbed a couple as he placed them on the toilet. Proceeding to remove his pants and underwear, the blonde then grabbed his scroll from the pants pocket. All right, Naruto murmurs, let us see if we can get one thing to work with us. Placing his fingers on a shower icon, he saw these little things bounce on the screen. Confused, he just pressed the first icon that was bouncing, which was a pair of snowflake flame conjoined twin symbols. He saw information on his scroll. Temperature, 80 degrees. 
Okay, Karama, what's a good steaming bath temperature? Are they really that intuitive to details? It appears so, which is weird, soft bellies. He he he, I'd say 100. Well, let's give it a shot. Naruto tapped the screen and made sure that the screen read out 100 degrees exactly, he chuckled a little bit, not so bad. He then went to the next icon, which was flow rate and direction. Looking into the bath and shower, he saw that it had two nozzles at the top, both pointed exactly toward the center. He blinked as he just simply went back to his scroll. Tapping the screen, tapping a faucet icon, he shrugged. Are you frigging kidding me? I have to put a drain on or off on this thing, why can't I just frigging put a plug? Naruto yelled as he noted that it took him a drain icon, seriously, who needs this much detail? Naruto then accidentally hit the back arrow, sending him all the way back to the main screen, damn it. He brought it back up, then noted with a twitch in his eye, I've got to enter all that again. He growled as he entered the temperature, clicked the faucet button, and then went to flow rate. Why the hell would anyone want a flow rate? What the actual hell was this place? Was this a combat school or a five-star hotel? Sighing as he just clicked on fast and went about to ambience. Ambience, what was that word, and what did it mean? Karama, what is ambience? You're serious? I didn't stutter. Oh, 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 someone's a little cranky today. Just please help me out, I don't feel like accidentally pressing an alarm button here, I just want a bath in peace. It means the state of a place, like an ambience was dark and silent. Oh, really, well, um, Naruto clicked a dim ambience on the scroll, the lights dimmed, and he puckered his lips a little, you know, this isn't so bad. The blonde reached and grabbed a towel from the closet, deciding to grab a third towel to use as a pillow. Walking toward the tub, taking a deep breath as he stepped in it, he then looked at the music option and shrugged. Okay, Naruto pressed the music icon, can't be that much, holy crap. Metal. Heavy metal. Country. Rock. Classic rock. Classic. Opera. Hip-hop. Rap. Violin. Piano. Atmospheric. Eribe. Fonus Blues. Baby death metal. Atlassian classics. Mistralian classics. Vacuoian classics. Valerian classics. Island beats. Naruto's head spun, and then he just lay back in the tub. What the hell is all of this? Groaning, he selected, classic. His right eye twitched as names came up, and he growled as he scrolled through them all. He came to an older-looking man by the name of Vivaldi de Mirabella and tapped his name. The selection of musical pieces was small enough for him to read off. For seasons, Naruto muttered. Well, let's give it a shot. It's nearly an hour long anyway, and it doesn't look like I have to set a timer. Surprise, surprise, Naruto huffed as he tapped the song. A loud combination of various instruments playing in a soft rhythm assaulted his ears. His fox ears fluttered at the sounds of a stringed instrument that sounded like Eris but had a lot more strings to them. Taking a deep breath as he then felt the water kick on, the hot steam from it flooded and cleared his nostrils up. The hot water on his skin was the most comforting part of it all. Shuddering as it finally got up around his body, like a hot blanket, even heating the porcelain bathtub. Laying in the water, noting a sweet aroma, he saw that he didn't even notice that a candle had been lit all this time in the bathroom. The tub filled with water completely to the edge. When Naruto was about to curse and raise up to stop it, it then shut itself off. Laying back into the towel, breathing deeply, I need a nap. Slowly, he closed his eyes. Naruto's eyes opened as he raised up, breathing hard as he looked around. He saw that he was in a hospital bed, covered in bandages. He then saw a nurse look at him, and she smiled brightly as she pulled down her face cover to reveal that it was Sakura. Welcome back, Naruto. Long nap? Sakura-chan. Yeah, who else? You've been gone a long time. How long? A few months. You just dropped back in Konoha a few days ago. Naruto blinked, then laughed as he threw his head back into the pillow, holy crap. He took a deep breath as he saw that Sakura was watching him. She sat at the foot of his bed, placing her hand on his as she clutched it. Then the door opened to reveal Sasuke, who was carrying lunch with him to share with Sakura and himself. He dropped it to the floor when he noticed Naruto was awake. Naruto! Sasuke yelled as he walked over to the blonde. About time you woke up. I know, I had the weirdest dream, but more on that later. Wow, a few months, any sign of Kagaya? Naruto questioned, wanting to make sure that she didn't come through earlier, and people got hurt. Sasuke shook his head, Hagoromo said that she got obliterated in your fight. Congratulations, dope. You're officially the only shinobi in recorded history to have killed a deity. 
Wow, Naruto chuckled as he sat up. Why do my hands feel numb? They're extremely chakra burned, but the tailed beasts are healing you up nicely. That's a relief. Oh man, I can't tell you how it feels to see you. Ah, HN, don't make it a habit. Oi, bastard, wanna settle it here and now? Sasuke flicked his forehead, don't make me knock you back out, dumbass. Laughing, wholehearted and truthful laughing, Naruto just rubbed the back of his head as he took notice of the casts around both of his arms. Taking a deep breath, he patted Sasuke's shoulder, giving him a patented toothy smile. A knock on the door, in came someone that Naruto didn't expect, Hinata. She closed the door behind her, Sasuke and Sakura then looked at one another before smiling and getting up from the bed, they looked at Hinata and nodded. Naruto was about to protest until he saw Hinata sit on his bed, looking at him. Naruto Kuen, she looked at him with sad eyes, welcome back. Naruto watched some tears spill from her eyes, Hinata? She then threw herself around him, holding him tightly and sobbed into his shoulder, please don't go, away, again. Blushing as she cried into his shoulder, he slowly brought his arms around her as best he could. Hinata, I. Hinata raised her head, her lavender eyes meeting his. Yes? I promise, Naruto stated as he looked into her very being, I'll be here. Naruto cupped her cheek, and they slowly looked at one another before his heart started racing. However, Hinata slowly dissolved into dust in front of him. His eyes widened as tears brimmed at the edges as she disappeared, flowing out of the open window. Hinata? Naruto got up from the bed, falling into a desk. Hinata? He quickly rushed toward the hospital door, stopping himself barely before falling into a giant crater. Kanoha was gone, it was all gone. He didn't understand it, where was Sakura? Sasuke. Sasuke, Sakura-chan, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto screamed as he looked around. Where are you? He he he, Naruto turned to the feminine laughter and found Kagaya standing behind him, hello, Ashura. You. Naruto screamed as he noticed the casts had come from his arms. Where are my friends? From ash, we came, to dust, we return, we're fleeting. He he he, I almost feel sorry for you, because our war is just beginning, and it will not end soon. For this won't be quick, it shall be painful, and I'll make sure to milk this world dry until I stand above all others, Kagaya said as she held an image of the world in her hand. A large explosion made Naruto turn back toward the door. The moon? One of the many casualties of our war to follow, Kagaya laughed as she watched Naruto sink to his knees in the doorway. We are dust in the wind, boy. Why won't you just, kill me? You are the greatest sin of all, a slayer of gods, you will suffer. You are cruel, you took everything away from me. I have still to break you. You'll die trying, bitch. He he he, then it's a gamble I'll gladly take. Kagaya snickered, scoffing at him. You chose this path. You forced me, Naruto gripped his fists and turned around, you took all I had. Kagaya no longer stood there, her form bore no evidence that it had even stood where she had been. Naruto shook as he felt a cold wind come around him. Turning back toward the door, he saw where the entirety of Kanoha was buried under snow, nothing but white remained in his vision. A cackle came from behind him, supple lips pressed near his ear, Welcome home, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto snapped around and found himself face to face with a woman with ornate hair. She had demonic red eyes, ghostly skin with dark purple veins traveling down her arms. She had the smile of Kagaya but wasn't Kagaya. Her power, however, much to his shock, was not too far behind. He felt uneasy, nearly wanting to vomit as he looked into her eyes, she gave him an all-too-familiar grin. The very same Kagaya gave him, the very same stench of power, but it wasn't her. She was someone else, and she merely pointed her hand at him. I'll see you soon, young one. Naruto couldn't protest as he felt himself turn to dust. Water splashed in the tub as Naruto had slipped underwater. He shot up from the water and gasped for air, Kurama? Naruto, I've been yelling for you for the last ten minutes you fell underwater. I felt foreign chakra appear, then it quickly disappeared. What happened? I don't know, I don't know, I need to go somewhere, I need to go somewhere now. Naruto flung himself out of the tub, quickly drying off as he got into the main room. He grabbed some fresh clothes in the form of black cargo pants, a white t-shirt, and a red jacket. Putting them on, breathing hard, he stopped as he neared the door. Naruto? Kurama, Naruto stops for a moment and then he started shaking as he fell to his knees, I want Hinata. Suddenly, Naruto found himself sobbing as he hit the ground, burying his head on the floor, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Naruto. I had a dream, she was right there, I could feel her, Kurama. She's gone. 
I know, and I hate myself for probably causing her pain throughout the rest of her life. If she loved you, like you believe now, she would have honored your sacrifice. What sacrifice? I'm still alive, everyone I knew and loved is dead, I may have won the war, Kurama, but I lost the battle. Naruto stated in his mind. He just sat at the door, and all this luxury, the future? What have I done to earn it? Everyone probably had to struggle to rebuild, and all I've done is basically sleep for thousands of years. You haven't slept. I am stuck in a world where they need people to kill creatures, not other people. The world has gone slightly soft, sure, but is this something you wanted to remember? What? The peace plan, remember, Jiraiya's dream? You haven't forgotten it, have you? The dream of peace? Have you noticed any talk of war recently? There is a combined effort of survival, sure, but a combined effort is a peaceful effort, is it not? You are not a god, Naruto, even if you stayed inside your timeline, what makes you think the world wouldn't have fallen? Kurama questioned from within Naruto. Then he sighed. We exist, we live, we decay. We are fleeting, we are not eternal, we only do what we can while we are here. Those words were spoken by my own creator, Hagoromo Atsutsuki, he is a man who died thousands of years before your time. So, Naruto took a deep breath as he heard Kurama, take a deep breath and calm down. Naruto took a deep breath, calming down as he then heard a knock at the door. Getting up soon afterward, he opened his door, and Ashpin was there, holding a white box. He held it out. Care if I join you for some breakfast, he then heard the music coming from the bathroom, ah, Vivaldi de Mirabella. A genius. So, let me get this straight, you're saying that I am certain, without a doubt, in the far future? Not just a few hundred years, not even a thousand? Naruto questioned as he rubbed the back of his head, looking at the mini flat cakes in the box. And what are these? Ah, those are pancakes, the little container in the box is syrup made from the trees around here. We use wrap sap sometimes, Ashbin chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head, it has the same effects as alcohol. Oh, Naruto hummed as he poked the cake with a fork, so are these sweet like rice cakes? They can be. Sometimes they can have blueberries added in, or even chocolate. I believe Ms. Rose shared a cookie with you in jail. Not necessarily a good way to start one's journey, but heroes come from the darkest of times and places. So, Ashbin bit into some of his eggs, I trust you slept well? Well, Naruto sighed, it's not a futon. Ah, I see. Well, I sure hope we can accommodate. By the way, Ashbin pointed at his jacket, were you on your way out? I was hoping to go for a light jog, Naruto said, offering a white lie. He had been planning to just run until he got tired. Ashbin nodded, health is very important. Our huntsmen and huntswomen train day and night most times to be up to par. See, that's the thing, why is everything so? Naruto tried to find the word for it, futuristic? Ah, well, that's certainly a word, but I believe you're looking for automatic. As much as I hate to admit, for all purposes, academies like ours are not run based on true need. Hunters didn't come about until nearly 100 years ago, after a powerful king from Vale taught the first of his knights to wield their aura as a weapon in an old manner. It then quickly spread from there, but humanity did break one condition, it was never supposed to be used against each other. Sad, Ashbin gave Naruto a brief history as he looked at Naruto, we're still under scrutiny. Well, I can understand that, but you all are supposed to be the protectors of the people. Some of us get power-hungry, lose our way, and others fall into darker habits. Oh, trust me, that's not needing a history check. Heh, tell me, did you have Grimm in your time? No, these things, like everything else, are new. We fought each other all the time though. Ashbin sipped some coffee he had made from the coffee maker on Naruto's dresser, so did you have any loved ones? Naruto sighed, yes, my friends were like my family. I was kind of falling for a girl named Hinata Hyuga, but, I'm stuck here now. They're long gone, probably not even dust anymore. I'd give anything to go back and live happily ever after. The older man nodded, I had a wife and child, they were taken from me by a person from my past. I managed to track down the said person and kill them, but it only brought emptiness. I would have given my soul to just go back in time to my son's first birthday. The blonde looked at the silver-haired man, fate plays an interesting deck of cards, for people like you and me. I don't believe in destiny or fate. Hmm, interesting, why not? Because, let's say it is my fate to be a hero, I turn around and just jump off a cliff? If you die, it proves you weren't meant to be a hero, but if you live, it was meant to be. You have a funny way of seeing the world. I just have a realistic view. You make life what you will with the effort you put into it. 
Instead of being a warrior, I could have been a gardener, but a warrior in a garden is better than a gardener in a war. However, Ashbin finished his coffee, they are both needed and serve the public. I was never bad at growing things, I sort of had a green thumb like my mother, Naruto admitted as he rubbed the back of his head. So, what were your plans when you became old enough to marry? Old enough, to marry? Yes, eighteen, correct? No, back where I am from, you could be put in a political marriage as young as ten. Ashbin sighed, and deprive a young mind of choice. My age was different, you served from day one, your village was your everything. Now, Naruto looks around the room, there is just everything, but no one can relish it all. You know, I find it interesting that you can understand our written language, especially since you're from a more archaic era. Want to reveal the tricks? Ashbin said as he finished his eggs, or do you wish to wait? No, I suppose in trade for the kindness, I can reveal a few things. I'm a reincarnate of an ancient person called Ashura, who's even older than my culture, even Kurama. Thanks to Ashura's soul inhabiting me, I can rapidly understand things, I can even understand a language after a few glances, which is how I began to learn your written language after a few stares. I wish I had this back when I was a kid, I'd be unstoppable right now, he he he. His father, the Sage of Six Paths as my people called him, bestowed me the body of the sage. Basically, Naruto squeezed his hands, it's why I am on a whole other level like with my friend, Sasuke. I assume that this Sasuke was close to you? He was an asshole, but yes, he was close to me. Brothers in arms? No, just brothers, just hard lives. Ashbin nodded, misunderstood for what you were able to do. How would you even know that? Naruto was surprised as he questioned Ashbin with his answer. Ashbin chuckled as he closed his now empty box, I like to think of people as books, some are coded, and some are just wide open. You, my friend, are a little bit of both. You said your ancient artifacts are from my era, possibly, do you have documents from there as well? Oh, yes, you see we managed to crack a few of these ceiling marks, and fresh tomes were extracted. How would you even know how to crack a ceiling jutsu? Experimentation, we've worked tirelessly for years to crack one, and then we found basic patterns. Well, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. Naruto sighed, can I perhaps see them, and know where you got them? Actually, yes, I was going to have you look at some of them since we can't fully translate. It would be very helpful toward us, we are scholars as well as warriors. It separates us from soldiers. Knowledge is perhaps mankind's deadliest weapon, perhaps even a curse if you look at it a certain way, but I believe if knowledge is applied toward peace, there is no limit to the wonders we can achieve. Do you, perhaps, believe the same? Ashbin questioned Naruto, you don't seem like a normal foot soldier despite your elevated status. I never liked following orders, Naruto admits as he leaned back on his dresser, and I never really liked to shed blood. The evils of the path you've chosen, Ashbin pointed out as he noticed that Naruto barely touched his food, but sometimes one must accept the brutal nature of the need for such things. Save one thousand, Naruto mutters, by killing one. It's how my teachers hardened my heart to killing. I haven't taken a lot of people, just a couple. People I saw that were irredeemable, that nothing could bring them back from the darkness. Tell me, Ashbin-san, Naruto sighs as he looked at the ceiling, is there even a god? I believe in gods, a brother god of destruction, and a brother god of life. Light existed before darkness, darkness can never beat the light, the sun shall always beat the moon. Duality, Naruto's eyes widened at the comment, given form. That man is hiding something. Yeah, because I can feel chakra running through him, but he's not trying to hide it. Perhaps he wants you to not feel alone? Yeah, maybe, but I can't shake this feeling he's hiding something. Agreed, don't lose your guard. Naruto, Ashbin got up, go for your jog. I shall return to my office if you need me, come by later as well, I'll have those tomes and scrolls ready for you. Just promise me you'll translate them over fully and send the translations to me. Naruto nodded, smiling, sure, why not? Thank you for watching our YouTube video. Your support means the world to us. We hope you enjoyed the content and had a fantastic time immersing yourself in our anime universe. Don't forget to give credit to the author. Their info can be found in the description. If you loved what you saw, we kindly ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all our latest releases and join a community of passionate anime enthusiasts. Don't forget to check out the video description for links to other exciting videos. We have a treasure trove of anime content waiting for you to explore. Once again, thank you for being a part of our anime journey. Your support keeps our passion alive.